literature, I've never been in a hurry and I've never thought how many books am I going to write in my life, you know, if I'm going to write one in one book in 10 years, then how much can I really produce? I've never thought things like that. Mm. But uh, um, I write several drafts quite slowly, but I always try to write my first draft in as inspired a moment and place as I can find. I see. And that draft, in some sense, is the foundation. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't, the foundation does not really change. After that, I keep, um, as a fellow writer has given me this word, so I use it repeatedly, he says that, you know, we keep tinkering with it. So every time I work on the draft again, I'm tinkering with it. And, you know, in this book, for instance, I didn't set out to write a book which will take me to the partition of India. Yeah. That. But when the partition happened, when the main protagonist decided to jump across that border mm. as well, yeah. and the last section became majorly about partition, yeah. and naturally when I would have done the, uh, the next draft, some bits of the, I mean, I already knew that that journey, mm. it's a different mm. uh, process when you mm. already know the uh, base draft. Yeah. So then some of those clues yeah. came in the beginning as well. Mm. In fact, it, I'll, I'll come, we'll come to that partition in, in, in a minute, in a minute uh, because it's a, it comes as a real surprise even to the reader that you know one never expected this 80 year old Amma Mai to suddenly want to go to Pakistan and we'll just come to that. I just had surprising thing is, you know, I, I mean, I, I would have, uh, when, I, when my protagonist did it, I would have, if I had stopped to think, I might have thought, my God, is it possible? How unbelievable is it? Etc. Etc. But as it turns out, it's quite a common thing. Yeah, it seems, seems lots of seamless. men and women in yeah. that sort of age have decided Born to jump to across and uh, manage to get, mm. you know, mm. to the other side. Mm. You know, but before we come to that, I want to talk a little bit about the Pakistan portion in detail. But I want, you know, the writing bit is one, you know, for a, for a writer, for an author. The other are these, you know, these observations. I mean, this really uh, minute observations about day-to-day -day things like, you know, uh, so many uh, so many methods to find a lost object in a quilt. <laughs> you know, for instance, there's a beautiful passage about that. So, the, uh, so is it? Uh, you know, how does that occur? I mean, uh, I know it's it's not very easy to say how it occurs. I mean, I suppose that is a talent and sheer genius of, of a writer. But uh, you know, do you store these things in your mind and then they come out when you write, or do you like actually note them down sometimes? I don't know what makes one a writer, but surely, I mean, observation and uh, interest in observing and storing uh, things one observes, uh, reflecting on those, that becomes part of your nature. So it's not, uh, I mean, again, I'm not the kind of writer who's sitting and, you know, making uh, little <laughs> observations and, you know, making an object of you and deciding this is how I will write it. But it just becomes my way of being, that I'm picking up little details, interesting details, and there is something called, um, I mean, give me credit for some imagination. No, no, it is, you know, it is sheer genius, yeah. actually. No, it's like, uh, well, genius is a you know, you're so, you know, as a reader, you're so stuck that, you know, how can, you know, that you think of such a thing at such a point. No, well, I mean, that's a huge big word you used. Uh, I, I'll never be able to <laughs> But uh, the point is that there is, after all, I, I call them the two beasts, you know, creativity mm. and imagination, mm. who you cannot tame, who visit you and mm. do all, make you do all kinds of strange things, make you do sometimes things which fascinate you also and uh, they are to be mm. wonderful. Mm. So I think they, you, there are observations which you have and these beasts, as I call them, <coughs> of imagination and creativity, pick them up and fly off and do some strange things like have a whole flock of crows yeah. climb into the yeah. book and standing. I mean, somebody said, what, I mean, their desire, their uh, dreams. Well, I never thought dreams and desire equals crows. Yeah, that's but true. Yeah, this is how it all formed the picture yeah. and it uh, pleased me too. Mm -hmm. And even the characters, of course, uh, there is Amma, there is Betty. But uh, this Rosie, 
I mean, character, which is uh, again, uh, it's so uh, unusual in some ways to have this old lady strike up this, uh, or is it not unusual? Uh, you know, to strike up this friendship with this transgender person, and then having such a ball. I mean, they're trying to imitate uh, birds, whistle. You know, uh, it's, it's as if, you know, uh, the, the Amma's childhood is back in many ways. You know, she's really become a little girl again. And it's true friendship. Well, to that, I mean, let, let me say two things. One, um, we have certain stereotypes. And those stereotypes uh, are not uh, meaningless. Mm. They do tell us something about people and uh, life and the world. But, Stereotypes also blind us to some other things which are actually equally common. Mm. So we have a stereotype about old people uh, becoming completely disinterested in life and retiring and being ready to die mm. or waiting just to die. And we think that the other way of being an old age, being very, very interested in life, mm. being, re you know, sort of being uh, ready to have a new innings. Mm and beating young people at it almost. Mm. That seems to us strange if you only stick to the stereotype. But look around you, it's not so strange. Yeah. There are, you know, elderly people and, you know, just loads and loads of them mm. who are absolutely still enamored of life. Their body doesn't keep pace, but they're still, you know, wanting to dance, yeah. wanting to do everything. And Sometimes enjoying the freedom which they did not have before and therefore wanting to do the things which they could not do then. Mm. And I've forgotten the second thing I was going to say. I thought I said... What <laughs> you, is, said you said two, yes. yes uh, what, is the, what was the question? Uh, briefly repeat. No, no I think I've got Rosie, I was you know, actually talking Rosie. about you know, how yeah. that uh, yeah. elderly woman, uh, like, yeah. uh, like a 